SketchUp, a 3D modeling tool. In this video, we're going to consider the basics of just getting started in SketchUp. And through this, you'll learn how to pan, zoom, and rotate your, your image, as well as how to draw some basic shapes and pull them up to become 3D. Once you find yourself confident about how to get started and drawing your 3D images and want to skip this startup screen, you can uncheck this box so that it doesn't show up and go right into SketchUp. But let's not do that yet. Let's start using SketchUp. SketchUp allows us to view our images, our objects, with an orbit tool. That's this circular blue arrow. We'll click on it once. Using my mouse button, I can now change the angle from which I can look at the center of my drawing. Now, SketchUp is 3D, and being 3D, the planes are depicted by the green, red, and blue lines. I can look through them, and I can even look underneath them by using the Orbit tool. I can look at this at any angle. The next tool is the Pan tool. I'll click on Pan and use the hand using the normal mouse button, and I can move side to side in any one plane. The next tool is the Zoom tool. And if I click on it and drag up and down, I can zoom in or out. An easier way to navigate or change your view using these functions is to just use the click roller on your mouse. If you happen to have a mouse that has a roller in the center that you can click, try this. Press down on the roller and drag from side to side or up and down. Now we can orbit. Or press the shift key and press the roller and drag from side to side. And we can pan. And just simply using the roller itself to roll in and out will let us zoom. These tools can save you a lot of time in your SketchUp. So let's start drawing. Well, the first thing I want to draw um, is a rectangle. And we'll use the rectangle tool to do that. We need to realize as we're drawing that everything we draw needs to be on one of these three planes. So I'm going to start uh, by actually touching the red and green lines so I can get these on the red-green plane. And there's my first object. We're also going to draw, I want to draw a circle. And this circle is blue because it's on the blue axis. That means that as it's pulled up 3D, it's on the blue axis. Okay? We'll do one more object while we're here. And th this is the most complicated. This is the arc. We'll draw a line. And there it is on 3. So there's my first points and my second point on the green plane. And then on, I'll pull out the other arc on the red plane about that far. There we are. Now notice it didn't fill with color. That's because this is not an object or a, a two-dimensional object yet. I actually need to connect the endpoints or the lines to complete this object, then it can be a color. Now we can begin the parts you've been waiting for. We're going to turn these two-dimensional objects into 3D objects by simply clicking on the pull-up button, push or pull, go to the surface, and pull up. We have 3D. In fact, we have so much 3D, we're up to our neck in 3D. But wait, that's not all. Do you remember that we can um, rotate our image by using the click mouse roller? I can click on any side and pull any side 3D, with a few exceptions. There we are. Those exceptions are curved surfaces. You can't pull a curved surface. Let's try that. Grab the push-pull button. We'll grab this surface. No, it even tells us that, which is, which is handy. However, I can pull on flat surfaces. And extend those. Well, there are some other aspects that you need to know about drawing, some other tools that you can do. Uh, one of the first things to realize is that all of these four elements are objects. I think of them as objects. And we can select, using the Select tool, our little helper that's been here all along, and by pressing the Delete key, remove her. I'm going to use the Orbit tool to orbit and look at my center rectangle. And I'm going to narrow it up a little bit so it can be prepared for the next tool. I'll use the 
push-pull. Choose the surface I want to push back, and we'll push it back to oh, something a little narrower. Using the Orbit tool again, by clicking on the mouse, pressing and moving, I can orient that box and still be 3D. What we want to do is add a window to our wall here. So we're going to draw a square. Once it's there, we can use the push-pull tool and push it all the way out. Now notice as I push it through though, it's gray in the back. If I let go now, nothing will happen. I actually need to orient this so that it actually is on face or on the plain blue plane. I can see the shadow in the background. That's my first clue that when I let go, it will have cut it all the way through. Let's continue our introduction to Google Earth by looking at some pre-drawn models that we can bring into our drawing. Um, we'll use that or do that by looking at 3D Google Warehouse. In here we can search for small things, appliances, tables, chairs, or large things like buildings and that's what I'm looking for today. I'm going to actually bring in the US Capitol. I'll click search and this is the one I've looked at before. This one was drawn by Google. Um, others have been drawn by other artists and submitted and you too can draw or submit elements to the Google Warehouse. I'm going to load this one directly into my Google Sketch. And there it is. Now they have the capital here. We can take a look at this. We can rotate in and look at it from the top down and maybe use a measuring tool to measure how far across it is. Um, some of these things though we could do in Google Earth. But there's something we can't do in Google Earth and that's what we're going to do next. And that is compare it to something else that we already know. Okay, I've reordered our view so I can go to our warehouse and this time we're going to search for the Space Needle. and we'll download that directly into our model. We're going to use this to compare its height and I think we'll also download one more building that we're familiar with um, in Spokane. Now one of the features that I haven't mentioned already is that uh, there's a tool or an aspect of Google SketchUp that lets you snap to. What that means is as objects are placed close to a plane or another object they can snap to or connect to recognize that edge of that object. We'll add our one more thing our Spokane building and from there what should we enter? How about uh, Doubletree? Click on that, download it, yes. Doubletree Hotel is a popular landmark downtown that most of our kids our students recognize. So I'll wait for it to snap. There it snapped. Good. And now I can compare the relative heights of these three buildings in SketchUp. This concludes our introduction of some basic tools and uses for Google SketchUp. Before I go though, I want to remind you or let you know about some useful helps. Google provides lots of tutorials that will help you through beginning stages, through intermediate and even advanced tricks and tips. Also, they have a blog where other people have asked probably similar questions that you've asked already. Good luck and enjoy your SketchUp.